today we have a um, really interesting lens. It's a very flat lens. It's a Chroma 24mm f11, a focus-free lens um, made of two... It's an optic design, optical design with two lenses, actually, made by, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, um, an artisan uh, in the UK. Very interesting because it's got an M39 mount, so no focus. Uh, quite interesting, per se. Uh, it makes for a really, really compact camera when you you put it on one of those uh, models. You can put it on many other models. That's a Leica 3, but uh, it works with any other uh, compatible camera. You can also add um, whatever you need, whatever uh, converter you need to have it on a more modern camera. Um, here, for example, let me up, let me put it on an M240. Um, it really makes it very comfortable in terms of size. Um, this not having any focus um, makes it also very fast, and you have access to, to live view, obviously. So, um, interesting, interesting lens. Um, so, not much more to say about it, except we're going to go see a few examples, uh, and we'll be back uh, after. The two first examples of this uh, dual element uh, lens, uh, the double glass from Chroma. Uh, that's the official name, 24mm f11. Uh, the first two images are from a Leica SL2 camera, so a relatively modern camera, but which has a micro prism array on front of the sensor, which has its importance, I, I believe, here. We'll see that later in other photos taken with another camera. Um, it's, it's a micro prism area that sort of uh, helps... Uh, light rays coming at stronger angles uh, not have their color modified by the the thickness of the sensor. Uh, you shouldn't have this problem on film, which is very thin, but on sensors you do sometimes have uh, this problem. I think it's linked to the buyer uh, matrix, but anyway. Um, as we can see, the, the geometry is really good. Uh, horizontal and vertical lines are really well respected. Um, there's a pretty good definition uh, in the middle of the of the picture. It really goes astray on, on the sides. It, it, we get this blurry effect uh, um, in the corners, uh, but actually, I think it's artistically well maintained. It's a it's actually a pretty good formula. I, I was quite surprised. It works pretty well. Um, so yeah, as you can see, daylight it works uh, great uh, in my opinion. Um, next picture is a portrait uh, format picture. Again, a little bit less uh, lit day, but um, one important thing is never forget that it's a focus-free lens. So f11 is really quite uh, tight uh, as an aperture. So you're going to have, if you go in low ISOs, you're going to have slow speeds. Um, so you might need uh, internal, internal body stabilization to have the best results and or really boost your ISOs, but as you can see, it gives a uh, way for interesting creative uh, pictures. If you, for example, here you'll go with really slow speeds and you'll get those motion blurs, uh, which can become interesting. But again, geometry is well, uh, well maintained. And this uh, peripheral blur is actually gives some depth to the pictures in, in my opinion. Um, besides the fact that it's an F11, uh, there still is uh, a focal plane. So, uh, the example on the left here, you have a good idea of what the bokeh is for really close uh, elements, uh, like here. Um, it's soft. It's it works well. Again, in my opinion, uh, well balanced uh, optical design. Uh, and yeah, the the picture behind uh, what's in focus is really renders really well. Um, uh, on the right, uh, again, geometry works well, in my opinion, and we have, we're have we starting to have an idea of how the lens manages high contrast. For example, the light source um, uh, upright. Um, everything's quite balanced, and, and this again, this effect of losing definition in the borders uh, is not that disturbing, actually. I think it's a creative effect in, in, in many ways. Uh, here again, two higher contrast situations, uh, where the importance of having a uh, really sensitive modern sensor comes comes out uh, if you want to boost your low lights. Uh, again, I think uh, color rendering, uh, everything works pretty well. It's definitely the 
the tiniest 24 millimeter, which works that I've had for a full frame camera. Um, and yeah, uh, those two examples speak for themselves, I believe. Then when we go in, in nighttime shots, I think that's interesting also to see how it reacts to uh, punctual highlights like those bulbs uh, on the left picture. And here again, I think the optical formula works great. Um, you, you get a glow, but it's, it's really nice. It's artistic. It's quite realistic. And the lens uh, renders really well, even in low lights. Uh, again, that's a, a, a slow speed, and I have internal body stabilization in this uh, camera. But uh, the picture on the right, that's with another body, which is the M240 M uh, format Leica camera, which is getting starting to be old. No IBIS inside. Okay, 24 millimeters lets you have some stability uh, per se because it's so wide. But but uh, still, you, you will need to go for really slow exposures and push your ISOs up. As we can see, we have quite some grain on, on this picture on the right. Um, but we'll see something else later. But it gives you a small idea. So there's this kind of cyan... Uh, like color on the top and bottom and i took this picture uh, well I, I selected this picture because we can see this flare there's a slight amount of flare sometimes with this lens as we can see on the bottom left part of the picture this semi-circular uh, light effect that's basically the most i i was able to get from this lens uh, as a flare which is good it's quite re quite uh, um, resistant and here I'm, I'm those two pictures are with this m240 uh, camera which sensor, I believe, doesn't have this micro uh, prism array uh, on the sensor. So we do get this color fringing on bottom and, and top, um, which is probably um, due to this uh, the, the angle of the light rays uh, on the periphery of the sensor. Um, so be aware of this. Uh, you might have that, depending on what uh, body you choose to use this lens on. Um, but yeah... Uh, otherwise really great lens uh, in other terms of rendering and again those two last pictures uh, example pictures uh, we do get this uh, color uh, distortion on top and bottom uh, at the periphery of the sensor but otherwise um, I think it's a really interesting lens in terms of how it manages uh, this false uh, depth um, uh, effect um, by having things a little bit blurry in the borders uh, the design, I think, is great because it really tried to maintain geometry, so it, it really gives it a, um, a straight look. And yeah, very interesting uh, compact uh, lens, um, and you can go for really slow speeds, like uh, on the right, you can, have, you can really have fun with motion blur. Obviously, a very interesting cam uh, camera lens with lots of character. Um, very very compact um that's that's really it's uh it's most important point it it got sent to me in this packaging so it, it's really really nice um to have something like that it's better than just a a cap if you want to have your camera very uh to stay very thin without the main lens uh, well another type of lens um so i highly recommend it mm -hmm.